So we recently moved our startup codedam.com from Vercel to AWS and in this video I want to explain why and how the current architecture on AWS works. We use Next.js at Codedam and for those of you who don't know what Codedam is, it is an interactive online learn to code platform where you learn with the community by building projects, solving lab questions, doing everything within the browser itself. All right, let's go ahead and discuss what are some of the problems with Vercel, why we had to move to AWS and what's the future. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Vercel, for those of you who don't know, is the parent company of Next.js, the company which created and owns Next.js framework. And they actually are cloud provider I, I won't go that far though they have a lot of cool features but it's you can think of it as a place as a Jamstack hosting plus a provider which gives you serverless backends I wouldn't say like complete backends because you cannot host, host complete Node.js servers but it's kind of like Jamstack plus backend with a very nice UI. I mean, that's the selling point of Vercel is not this. The selling point of Vercel is this part, where it's very easy to configure the whole thing, which is serverless, scalable, globally distributed, and has a pretty sane UI. If any one of you have ever used AWS, if you move to Vercel, you're gonna realize how simple Vercel is. All right, so from, I think, January of 2021 to November of 2021, codedam.com was hosted on Vercel. Super simple, you just pay a subscription amount to Vercel, you host the website on their servers, it gets deployed to AWS, S3, pretty much globally across the world, and everyone has a nice time. You as a developer, the person as a developer. So why did we move on? Well, for starters, the Indian banks did not allow me to pay a bill of 110 115 I guess USD to Vercel and I have absolutely no idea why four of the cards which I tried did not work so this payment this was impossible to pay forward to Vercel because of all the error messages and all the RBI regulations which exist in the country I talked to my bank I talked to Vercel Vercel uses Stripe internally and they were also not able to figure out why this transaction is not happening so the problem here was that Vercel, although has a great nice UI, one of the worst thing about them is that if your billing fails, if the charge on your card fails, Vercel freezes all your deployments. What do I mean by freezes? This means you cannot update your deployment, you cannot change any configuration. If you by mistake delete a project, you cannot add it back. If you remove a domain, you cannot add it back. So it's more or less kind of frozen in time, which makes sense to be honest, but not so much. For example, in this situation, if you're somebody, if you're a company, if you're a startup from India who has some bank regulations to sort first of all or maybe i have to arrange a credit card or something there was no way we could ship a critical or an urgent update on the website because Vercel would not allow us to do that plus honestly we are not very big client of Vercel. we don't get thousands or tens of thousands of usd bill per month we are a small startup which uses Vercel as one of their services so it makes sense to not prioritize us as a business it makes sense to have more companies prioritized which are paying more for support and billing and this and that right so i understand that point second of all it would have been worth a fight if i actually liked Vercel's pricing model Vercel's pricing model i feel in my opinion is a huge red flag for any startup or any company which is not an enterprise but they have decent amount of usage i'll tell you i'll share some of the statistics of code dam so Code down this month, the reason we got 115 USD bill was because we had three $20 Vercel Pro seats. So Vercel charges you per seat. This is already something I don't like. Plus a $55 bill for 100 GB bandwidth transfer. And let me tell you one interesting fact about this. We actually, as the billing shows, this amount, this amount was not 100 GB, this was 77 GB but Vercel rounds it up to 55 USD. This fact, if it in itself is not bad, consider that $55 for 100 gigabyte bandwidth is super expensive. It's super duper expensive. You can see that in Code Dam this month, in the month of November, we did close to 1.1 terabyte of data transfer. 
right? Vercel gives you the first terabyte of data transfer for free. And then for every next 100 gigabyte of transfer, it's going to charge you 55 USD until you upgrade to their enterprise plan, which is going to cost you thousands of dollars per month, which is obviously not something we will do. If this wasn't bad enough, Vercel also charges $55 per 100 GB hours of Lambda execution, right? Compare these rates with AWS, it's close to seven to eight times both in terms of lambda functions and in terms of bandwidth seven to eight times more than aws and aws is considers is being considered as one of the most ridiculous cloud providers in terms of pricing of the data and the bandwidth right google cloud cloudflare cloudflare has zero dollars of egress fees Vercel takes 55 dollars for 100 gigabytes of data so consider that so we had a bill of twenty dollars plus fifty five, yeah, it makes up one hundred fifteen USD, which is which was our bill. So yep, I mean, I knew that even if I put up a fight, I you know called Warsaw support, I called my bank, I did all of this stuff, we were able to somehow pay this amount. The next month, this would probably go to five hundred or eventually one thousand, even though we are not growing that much because at this point. If we did a two terabyte of data transfer per month, then what it would be is basically 550 USD just for the bandwidth part. That is one terabyte. And this is this is like a ridiculous amount of money to spend on just bandwidth where companies like Cloudflare charge basically zero dollars. So anyway, this was the second breaking point in terms of like, you know, a deal breaker that we have outgrown Vercel. I love Vercel. I love the Vercel developer experience and what they do, but I only love it until you don't hit the limits. That is one terabyte for pro account, one terabyte hours, I think thousand GB hours for the Lambda functions, 5,000 images, image optimization. This is also like, I don't want to get into image optimization, but this is also like ridiculously expensive. And yep, I mean, at this point, it made pretty much no sense for us to stick our architecture, to stick our infrastructure to Vercel. And it made more sense to move to AWS because this problem, this banking problem would not happen with AWS. AWS has billing systems in India where it would charge you in rupees in INR. So we would not face this issue with banks and what all. And second of all, AWS at this point, at this scale where we are, it will be cheaper than Vercel. Plus, of course, we get a lot of credits, a lot of startup credits with AWS as well. So that is also a benefit for us to, you know, just expend a bit more for our ease and comfort and learning. But by the time the credits expire or, you know, they are about to expire, we get everything in line. Now, Vercel, don't get me wrong, this, the things which you offer for $20 per month plan, these numbers are great. They are more than enough for any particular application or a side project or anything. But eventually, if you are running a startup, especially if it involves the use of some high bandwidth or images or videos and this and that. And mind you that this does not include the S3 file transfer that will be hosted on AWS S3 in front of CloudFront, right? So this one terabyte data transfer is actual front end assets, HTML, CSS, JavaScript files which are downloaded, right? It does not even include images, right? Because we moved that to some other provider. So there would be times when startups outgrow this number and maybe 10 terabyte, 100 terabytes. And at that point, either if you have the money, if you have the funds, you can upgrade to the enterprise plans or get a team which can ship to AWS and you can manage your infrastructure from ground up. Of course, this is AWS is much worse than Vercel in developer experience and how you set up projects. But at this point, it doesn't make sense to pay so much on a monthly basis when you cannot pay, <laughs> literally. And I mean, this amount is also ridiculous, to be honest. So right now we have moved to AWS successfully. That means when you go to codedam.com, you inspect the headers, you will be able to see that your files are served from S3 which is behind CloudFront, which is distributed all over the world. So all the CloudFront CDNs are distributed all over the world. And over here, anything which requires serverless compute, that happens over Lambda Edge, right? So Lambda at the rate Edge, which is the service name in AWS. This sits as a way to run those get static props and get server side prop function. And everything else goes through CloudFront, which is the CDN by AWS and sits in front of S3 where deployments actually are made, built, removed, 
on every single push and commit we have created a little review environment just like uh, wordcell offers but of course this is all for much much cheaper price so your takeaway from this video could be that if you are a startup if you are a company if you are somebody who's approaching this one terabyte data transfer limit on wordcell just be careful that you might have to make a shift to aws or a proper cloud provider not these Jamstack plus backend providers because I have checked Netlify. Netlify also has similar rates. So try to move to a serious cloud provider if your business is also getting a bit serious. And if you obviously cannot afford to give thousands of USD per month as an enterprise contract. So that is all for this video. If you like this, make sure you leave a like. In the next video or maybe in some other video, I'll actually go into depth of how the architecture on AWS works right now, complete architecture and how you can also deploy your next project as an exercise if you want to just like wasting your days with AWS and you know just hitting your head on the wall several times when you're deploying something. Let me know in the comments below, we'll cover that soon in the next video or maybe some other video. So that is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.